I'm Eric with Profoto. And thank you all for joining this evening. Uh, thank you, Rui. Thank you, Sammy's, for having us be a part of Sammy's school. Um, that's pretty cool to see so many people in the chat. I think, Chris, of course, you get the award for furthest traveled in Uganda. So thanks for showing up again. We always appreciate that. Uh, so I think you guys are all, like Rui said, in for a real, real treat tonight. I uh, want to introduce you guys to Tracy McGlosky, who is one of Profoto's legends of light. And she does such amazing work, so inspiring to myself. Uh, and to so many others too. And I've actually never seen this, uh, this class before, so I'm really excited to see it myself. So uh, it, it, I, that's all I'm really gonna say, except I'm gonna monitor the chat. And if you guys have any questions, I'll try and answer as many as I can. If you have a quest question for Tracy, of course, let us know. I'll try and interrupt Tracy and hopefully we'll get to everybody and get them all answered. So without further ado, of course, Tracy, I'd like to hand it over to you and uh, have you take over. So thanks again, everybody. Okay, so I have a close mic on today so that you guys can hopefully hear me. And and even though um, you might hear some squeaks or a couple little wriggles while we're going through this, um, I wanted to bring a real baby because I think like if, if Ryland will let us um, go through the class today, it's easier to see light on skin than on anything that we can do with a fake baby. So I just wanted to see if we could bring a real baby. And it just so happened that one of my very favorite clients had her baby one week ago today. And that is perfect timing for exactly what we're going to do today. So um, they just got here a few minutes ago and I got him dressed real quick and he's super happy right now. So we'll see what happens. The objective today is going to be to try to show you how you could go from natural light, which you can see here in the window, um, to using the constant light of the B10s to potentially moving into strobe. And I know as a natural light shooter myself, when I very first started out, that was all I knew how to use and I was comfortable with that. And I did not want to give up my thinky of natural light. And natural light is beautiful, so it's easy to get addicted to natural light. It creates a, a gorgeous way of having fewer shadows if it's perfect. Um, and a lot of natural light shooters are really comfortable without having as many shadows. So I want to show you how if you are interested in having the opportunity to shoot all the time with soft light, that you can do that anytime that you want to instead of relying on the perfect scenario. Now, a lot of you are from California, so maybe you have the perfect scenario more often than we do. In Ohio, it is very dicey. We never know when we're going to have anything from rain to snow any month of the year. So <laughs> we don't take our chances with natural light. Um, a couple things to note. Um, we have the beanbag set up. And I have a light there, but I'm going to move it, and we're going to get the baby situated. We're going to have a couple different camera angles. So even though this isn't a posing class, I generally will talk through the whole thing and give you little tips as I go of how I get babies comfortable on the beanbag. I'm hopeful to show you three different poses that translate beautifully into the pictures with mom and dad as well. Because uh, we find ourselves doing a lot of the same thing, a lot of the same poses, whether we're on a beanbag, in a basket, in a bucket, or wherever, it's kind of the same poses, just in a different scenario. So if you can nail up three poses, you're ready to kind of go. And even though, yes, there's more you could learn, you definitely would have enough to get started if you had those three things down. So we're nice and toasty, and we're in a cute little bear costume, outfit, soft, soft outfit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over to the bean bag, and I just want to show you a few things with light. The first pose that we're going to try to do today is um, the bum up pose. And I just want to show you guys, I've got a lot of different ways of propping up babies. And there's a lot of product available. Um, and it can range from anything to like super expensive things all the way down to things that you can make at home. So wherever you are on your journey, I just want you to know that you can make it happen even if you're making things yourself. 
And I wanna show you a little bit about that. So here is a ring and this is just a really soft ring and it's not very expensive. And we can stick that underneath the blanket to do our back pose, which we are gonna do in a little bit. But what I really wanted to show you was some of my favorite posers, which are socks that I got from Costco filled with rice. And rice is such a great posing element because it's so movable and you can squish it around and, and prop baby up where you want. So we're gonna start there and do the bum up pose. Now, one other thing that I will show you that I often use, and you guys are just gonna have to kind of excuse my moving around, is just plain towels. These are just white towels that I get in bulk at Costco to make my nice big ledges that I'm gonna put the baby on. Now, let's come over to the bean bag and I just wanna show you what's on my bean bag so you all can be, you don't think I'm, I'm cheating or something. <laughs> so here we go, we have the bean bag, right? And underneath our bean bag blankets, I just have more and more blankets. And the reason is so that I can create a really nice soft well. I wanna have blankets that I can put my posers underneath to create the look that I want when the baby's being posed. So back here, I've already pushed down a nice deep well in my bag so that I can get baby into that well. I will flip up my blankets and I wanna be able to put the baby's head and I'm gonna move that light just a little bit back. Actually, we'll just move forward a little bit. So I want to be able to use the natural light in this first shot so you all can see it. I'm going to create a well up here for baby to put elbows on for this bum up. And then I'll do another one in the bottom for legs. Now he is super happy right now. That could change. And if it does, it'll be fine. Um, while I'm setting this up, I just want to say to you all as well, when you're doing a newborn session, <laughs> one of the most important things that you can do is prepare yourself because babies are energetic sponges. So I know this sounds silly, but you cannot come into a newborn session nervous about the newborn because if you do, the babies will sense that. And so it's really important. It's not like they're trying to pounce on you or something, but it's just important to note that newborns, when you're nervous, they begin to feel nervous and uncomfortable as well. So keeping your energy nice and clean. I don't know if you have to do a meditation beforehand or listen to some music or whatever you need to do to get your energy nice and clean so that you and baby are on the same page, right? Because we want them nice and sleepy. And so here we have our well, okay. I told you I'm gonna tell you a lot of things as we go through this, but I wanna show you the natural light part because it's eight o'clock here in Ohio, and that means the light is kind of already waning. So I have my well, and whenever I am positioning a baby, I am always super careful with their necks, okay? So we're gonna bring baby in, make sure his head is nice and supported, and bring him up to this position. Now, I can always tweak, but I can already tell, Tony, do you have the camera that you can bring over here? I can always tell if baby's nice and cozy and I'm trying to bring these feet around. We want to make sure that we can always see baby's head and face, right? So we just do a little squish there, bring that hand in. Now, as I'm going through my poses, I just want you guys to know, I'm usually using this magical device called a baby shusher. Oh, Tony's gonna show you. And if you don't have one, you should get one because they're like $20 on Amazon. They're the best thing ever. And I'm gonna turn it on just for a little real light sound for him, just so there's something constant. Also, as we're going through this, I just want you guys to know that the studio is balmy. Like in here, I'm sweating already. <laughs> Um, I've left his onesie on because we're using this outfit and a lot of times if baby starts to get a startle or anything like that, one of the best things that you can do is just put a hand on baby. So we're going to bring this towel forward a little bit and we really want this elbow and this knee to touch each other before our bum up. 
And we may find that we have to put a little more lift here, which is totally fine. This is why we have the bean bags. So a lot of people think that babies just go into these magical positions, but the truth is we have to lift and lift and lift the whole time, really gently. I'm going all the way under my original props to bring that prop in underneath, if you can see that, just to get that nice lift. Now I've lost his hand and I'd really like to have that a part of the image just for those tiny fingers. So I'm just gonna reach in and try to bring them forward and not interrupt him too much. Now, if I was doing a session right now, I would use this as an already ready to go safe pose because it's there, it's not completely perfect, but I know I've got it and he's asleep. So I could go ahead and take a picture already. But since we're not doing that part right now and I wanna show you the light, I wanna show you guys and let you follow me on the bean bag as I bring baby around to the natural light. And let me just put a hand here and move this back a little just to make sure it's not blocking any of the light. Okay, so you can see the natural light falling on baby's face as we move around. Now, many of us like natural light like this, which is totally fine um, if that's how you shoot with your natural light. Personally for babies, the best direction of light to be able to show all of the features of baby is gonna be that light kind of falling down over the face from the brow. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. We wanna be able to see the features. And when we come this way, we begin to lose all the features and there's no shadow that actually shows the baby's cute little features and wrinkles. So bringing baby this way a bit from the light and allowing the light to fall across gives us this nice little butterfly light underneath the nose. And we still get to see all the features on the face, if that makes sense. Now, a lot of us would shoot this natural light shot and like I said, the light is super low here today because it's already almost 8.15 because time goes way too fast when I'm teaching. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually block off the natural light. And I wanna show you how you could use the B10 Plus as a constant light if you're still a little bit iffy about strobes so that you can kind of elevate your game. And while I'm doing that, I'm just gonna, always make sure my baby is safe. And if I'm like today, the room is too small to have an assistant in here. So I'm just not leaving baby at all. And I'm going to see um, if Tony can flip it over to the other one and um, go ahead and block off that natural light. So now this is my B10 plus. And I did it exactly this way in front of the window to prove a point to you that you can create the same exact light that you could from a window with a constant light. And this is the XL, I'm sorry, this is the large um, umbrella with the white inside and the diffuser on the outside. So when you're thinking about the light, we've got a nice big light, which is same as the window, right? and we've got the constant light, so we don't have to worry about the flash going off. And a lot of people, photographers, are worried about that light going off. And so I just, I like to say, if you're transitioning and trying to learn how to use strobes, there's literally not a better way to learn how to use strobes than to use this natural light or this um, uh, constant light on the B10 Plus in the same way that you would use natural light. So um, bring your light here and do the same exact thing. Just turn until you like the little butterfly underneath baby's nose and you're still getting all of these features, right? So now that we've done that, and none of you will believe me, but it's really this easy, we could do the same exact thing with using the strobes. Now, for newborn photography, it is up to you whether or not you think that the strobes are disturbing when the baby's already asleep. Because you know what they say, you never wake a sleeping baby. <laughs> I strongly believe in that. That is a philosophy I definitely embrace. So I will tell you that as you're doing this, if strobe is kind of 
um, disruptive will then use the constant light. But most babies don't, are not disrupted by the strobe because it's so quick. So what I want to do is I'm going to take a few images just like this. Let me move this hat because it's going to be in my picture. I wasn't sure if we were going to need to wrap or what we were going to do. So I am going to take a few images and um, just to let you know, I'm shooting um, with a f1.2 lens and um, I'm going to shoot at f1.2 and I'm just going to do the face right now because I feel like it's going to be easier for me to do that. And I can just show you, let me see if I can get my focus actually to go though. There we go. Just take a couple quick shots so you all can see. Now, I can adjust as much as I like in terms of my ISO. Right now, just to let you guys know, the shot that I just took is at um, F12, 1 50th of a second, and probably ISO 200. Um, it's hard for me to see when I'm in this. Oh, there we go. Yep. So I'll probably go up to 400 just to give myself a little more speed, or 320. We'll do ISO 320 and 1 80th of a second at F12. Same thing. Okay. Now, if I'm going too fast, tell me. But Tracy, um, we do have a couple of questions. For the just meantime, so you know. okay, okay, good. Go, Eric. Tell me. <laughs> okay, cool. No problem. I didn't want to. Didn't want to interrupt you, but um, I think some people in the chat might have figured this out. But just to be sure, um, they wanted to know uh, what the ring structure around the bean bag was. Okay, good question. Okay, so this is called um, a Paloma shell. And that's the one that I have. There are many different versions online. You don't have to be stuck on the Paloma shell itself. Um, there are definitely less expensive options. Um, I just happened to get this a long time ago and I love it. And then I, I will give you another hint that a really good idea is to get a bean bag with really soft beans in it um, because the harder, bigger beans don't do as good of a job. Right, so um, if you're gonna do the bean bag underneath, which I'll kind of show you guys if Tony is here. I also just use a gr rug gripper so that the blankets don't slide. That's another little hint for anyone who's interested. I just got like a Amazon rug gripper, put it on my bag, and then I put like lots of thick, lush blankets um, just so that I get that softness that I'm really looking for. Um, but this is a Paloma shell, and the cool thing about it is that it allows me to stretch my fabric and then use clips to, like, keep the fabric in place. Um, and it really helps in terms of, like, smoothing out things that you don't want to edit later. Does that answer the question, Eric? Yes, I, th I think that does. Um, and the other question that we have, of course, I, I don't, didn't get any clarification, but I think that does answer it. Thank you. Um, and the camera that you're shooting with, I, it's not full frame, correct? No, um, this is a, a mirrorless camera that I'm shooting with right now. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so I don't want to speed through this part because I think that the most questions that I get about um, transitioning from natural light to strobe is about people being uncomfortable with the idea of using a strobe. But the problem is natural light is so unreliable. And, and it's so inconsistent, right? So when if you want to do a newborn session at 7 o'clock at night, you never know what you're going to do. Like here, this window that we were using today in my studio is east-facing, and it's 8.30 at night. So the light really is not coming in this window. But in the morning at 10 a.m., the light is banging through those windows, and it's making it really impossible for me to get great light because it's too harsh. Um, so then I'm figuring out ways to diffuse it. The cool thing about using a, a constant light is that you can do a session anytime, anywhere, right? And this big umbrella, this large umbrella, gives you the perfect amount of soft light. And because it's not direct light, because the light goes back into the umbrella and then comes back out, it's soft, just like you would want your window light to be. Now, I want to show you the, the part with the strobe because I know that that gets scary. So, and may, and some of you may not be scared at all, but those of you who are, I need to speak to it because the thing is, I think that we all think something is gonna happen when the strobe goes off that doesn't happen when we're using constant light. 
the truth is Profoto has made this so easy that it's actually ridiculous. Um, and so if you've never seen a demonstration of how to get perfect skin exposure every time, I wanna show it to you so that you have it in your back pocket. So I'm gonna turn on my um, trigger and I just want to take my trigger and, and for those of you who've never seen this before, I'll let Tony get really close. Um, so I've got my trigger on and my strobe is set to my, my eight, my channel eight. I'm going to take my trigger and turn it to TTL. And I'm going to actually, A is set to um, positive one. I'm going to flatten it out. So here's my strobe. And I'm, for the sake of argument, so y'all don't think I'm cheating, um, I'm actually going to turn this constant light off for just a second to get my reading. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off. If I can turn it off, why aren't you going off? Let's see. There we go. And then um, I'm going to take my trigger and my camera and listen, like I'm gonna take a just a really quick skin shot. So for the, can you kind of see um, what's there, Tony? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you guys can't see, let me know. But my camera, with my camera, I'm gonna get as close as I can to get just skin and skin only. And then I'm gonna take a quick shot and my TTL has then read exactly um, what the skin exposure should be. And I'm going to turn that off of TTL onto manual because this locks down the exposure. And then I'm going to take a really quick shot of baby to show you what we did. And I just want you to notice, if you can, it only did 1.7 on the, um, on the, the, the uh, B10 plus. So it's still really soft light, right? Now I'm gonna be able to show you these images in just a second, but it's just at 1.7. Every time I do this, I have people ask me to do it more. So I'm gonna do it again because I know that it can be a little bit confusing. I'm going to take my trigger and turn it to TTL. This is, this TTL stands for through the lens. And all we're trying to do is get the lens and the camera and the lighting to talk to each other and tell us what the exposure needs to be on baby's skin. I'm gonna try to get to the part of the skin that's closest to the light because that's what's gonna get the most light. I, for my camera, have pulled back my manual focus ring because I'm too close to get focused. That's the only reason I do that. And then I just take a quick shot. Now I come back, I put my camera back in autofocus I turn off TTL mode and go to manual to lock down the exposure I just decided on. And then I'm gonna come in and take a really quick shot of my baby. Now, we'll show you those shots in just a minute so that you can see how easy that is. Does anyone have a question about this process? Because this is where it's at if you want to use strobe for babies. And it's so simple and everyone ask me about this because they think that it's scary to use strobes. And I just want to clarify how truly easy Profoto has made it to do a newborn session with strobes and to not have to worry so much about what power your light should be at. Because that is what everyone is worried about. They always ask me the same questions. What power should I do it at? Any questions on that, Eric? Uh, nothing on that. Um, I actually had one question about what's the focal length? of the lens you're using? Oh, this is a really great question. So I'm, you know, I'm shooting micro four thirds, so it's double this for full frame, but I'm using a 25 millimeter. And that's okay. actually a really important question. Um, so if you're full frame, it's 50 millimeters, but I'm doing that so that I can stay close and have a safe distance to my baby. So I never wanna be so far away that I can't, because, you know, when Brie came in and brought Ryland, she said, he's just so you know, he's rolling already. He's starting to roll around. So he may not roll all the way over, but he's already on an incline on my beanbag. So I need to be super careful that he's not rolling. So that 25 millimeter allows me to stay close enough to always be touching the baby. Um, in normal studio sessions, I will just let you know, I have an assistant with me at all times. This newborn room is fairly small. Having one more person in here would have been way too much. So I just decided I'm going to stay really close and just keep, and usually beanbag's okay, but 
even if it's mom and dad who are there working with you, it is so important to have someone there just spotting to make sure baby doesn't roll. Because I know they tell us our babies don't roll around until three months, but that's a lie. So, any other questions, Eric? No, ma'am, that's it. You're good. Oh, you know okay. what? There is one more. So, I'm so sorry, Tracy. I just saw it. Yeah. <laughs> My apologies. No, it's okay. Uh, let's see. This is, and this is a good question. Do all strobes lock after going from TTL to manual? So that's a really good question. So if you think about it, the answer is yes, because when it's on manual, that means that it's manually changed only. So you have to do the changing if you want to do it. Not all strobes have the TTL, TTL technology that Profoto has integrated in specific triggers. So for example, I'm using an Olympus model camera right now, and this is a TTLO for Olympus. So if you had a Canon, you would use a TTLC. If you have a Sony, you use a TTLS. And those technologies are specifically integrated into the individual triggers so that the TTL works perfectly with each brand. So if you have not tried that, I'm, I mean, go to run to Sammy's and try it or just trust me, it is a game changer to be able to always have the perfect skin exposure. So we got some more. Why not use in, the Tracy. lowest ISO? What's that? We got some more rolling in, if that's okay, that are pretty relevant. Yeah, go right ahead. Too. Tony, um, will you turn the volume up a little bit? Does flash hurt baby's eyes and how to position the flash to minimize effect on the baby's eyes? Okay, that's a great question. And it's something that I have researched extensively because um, it was something I was concerned about, actually. And there is actually no evidence to support that flash does anything to a baby's eyes at all. There has been no evidence of that ever in the history of ever. So, and I have looked, believe me, extensively, but feel free to research it online. And again, another option here, and this is why I love this for newborn photographers. Most newborn photographers are not just newborn photographers. They are newborn photographers. They are baby photographers. They do one-year pictures, right? So we take a baby all the way through all the milestones of the first year. This, this, um, the constant light, if that's your jam for newborns, is awesome for newborns. But when you need something fast for the toddler that's coming in a year, when they're running around at their birthday session, you're going to need the strobe. So being able to have the versatility of both is amazing. So if strobes don't work for you for newborns, it's totally fine. Um, and just feel free to use the, the, uh, the, the, net, the constant light feature. And I'm telling you, it's awesome because it's also, it's temperature and color control or temperature and power controllable. So feel free to um, ask Eric any technical questions that you have about that. But it's a really great item for newborn photographers just because Tony is using the phone right now to show all the different colors that you can create with that. So you can go warmer or cooler based on your style or what you're looking to create. So that's just something to think about there. And you guys can see like he's completely calm and comfortable because the room is warm and he is not budged in the, in the littlest bit. So we're going to like up the ante and see if we can get him on his back so that you guys can see another pose and just kind of see how we would work the light angles. Um, one thing I'd like to point out because we have a, another light set up in the back. So I have a two by three soft box with a grid set up in the back as well. For my style, I really enjoy um, cutting out the babies. So for me, I love that backlight, that little edge that comes from that, that backlight. So I generally always use at least two lights in my photography, but that's just because I like separating the baby a little bit and giving that edge light. So if you're interested in the pack of these two things, it's awesome because you get the two lights, you get the trigger, and then you get your modifiers, whichever ones you choose for you, and you're good to go. So um, so I hope that answers some questions. Um, one thing to just note really quick when you're handling um, the babies is, uh, this sounds so obvious, but like always make sure baby's neck and head are supported. Um, and the trick here with newborn 
posing and I'm just, I can't go into it too much, but I just want you to know the trick is always making sure that things are supported with bean bags or towels or socks filled with rice or whatever, because that is really truly the thing that babies need is to feel secure. Um, at this age um, of just one week, baby's still not sure if he's in the womb and has not realized yet that he's in the world. So as you're doing your newborn sessions, the closer we get to the birth date, the easier it is to keep baby kind of calm and, and happy. When we get into two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, we're really at a stage where we're not in the newborn phase anymore. So just something to think about as you're scheduling. Um, another really quick note, which we're totally breaking the rules here on this one, is um, I usually do my newborn sessions at 10 a.m. So 10 a.m. to me is the best time for a newborn session. Um, when, when I had my little boys, I used to call the evenings. I would say that there was a time at night that I called the witching hour. And if you are a mom or a dad, you probably know this well. There's like that one hour of the evening that your baby just cries. And it's probably exercising lungs or whatever. But that is what I used to call that because... I just, it was every single night. And so when we bring a baby in in the morning, they're more generally going to sleep, probably because they kept their parents up all night, but you know, <laughs> they're cute, so they get away with it. Um, so the, for the back code that I'm about to show you, I'm going to use this ring. And I like to use it just, we could probably even use the dip that we already have there, but I want to show you what different things work like so that you can see them. Um, and then I, so what I'm going to do in between every single pose, I'm going to remove very slowly everything that I already have in there. So I'm going to show you, um, I will take my hand underneath these towels under here and just hold that up so that when I take out this sock, I'm not disrupting him. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here, hand under the towel, take out the sock. And then I'm gonna go backwards again and take out these towels, right? Just hold his, his little bum up a little bit so that it's not just jerking it out of there and startling him. And then I'm gonna to start to build in here with this as I take out this front one. Now remember, the slower and more methodical I am, the less startle we have to deal with and the more likely he stays in a deep sleep. And he's going to wriggle a little bit, and that's okay. We don't have to, if there's a little wiggle, a little grunt, it's totally fine. It's nothing to freak out about, okay? So um, we're going to bring this ring in, and then we're going to just flip him just really softly and really slowly. Now, I will warn you, some babies don't like being on their backs. So it just depends on the baby. Some babies really prefer, like you can see, he loves his tummy which of course they're not supposed to sleep on their tummies overnight and all babies want to. So we're just gonna sneak this in, same way we snuck in the towels, right? Just go under and then we're just gonna bring bottom up and we'll go under again with the bottom, really soft and gentle and slow. And again, if he wriggles, it's not a problem. We're just gonna let him come into this. And then as we bring it in, we've still got his head and neck totally taken care of. We'll push it up as far as we want to on the bean. And then we can always adjust the blankets as we get him in there. Okay, so we've got that there. Now, I already know I'm gonna need some extra stuffers to go around him as I get him flipped, but let's just see what happens and then we can work from there. So when you're taking a baby from one position to another, the most important thing is just slow, gentle rolls, not fast movements. Okay, he's already kind of happy and settling in. Now, one thing I know I have to do is get him in there nice and tight. So we're gonna get some of our little beans and we're just gonna put them in there to keep him nice and happy. This is a different kind of bean, but it doesn't really matter because we wanna bring that little elbow up, get him nice and supported. We'll just bring that up just a little bit. 
Good job, Rylan. We'll get his feet nice and comfy. Bring the hat around. And if you start to feel them get like they're going to get a real wriggle going on, the best thing you can do is just do a soft hand on them just so they feel safe and comfy, right? So we can stuff as many things as we want in there till we feel like we've got a comfortable position going on. And remember, it's always under the other thing. And just bring it on through just to give as much support as we can. Nice and gentle. We can cross feet. And you may very quickly learn how baby was laying inside mom based on how they react to certain positions. And sometimes a wriggle, a little, when they start to squirm a bit, it's awesome time to like get their hands where you want them. And just kind of hold them in place for a minute. Also a little gentle shake like this is so great for getting them to calm back down and just get comfy like he's getting real comfy now. One thing I can see is that I'm gonna to want to make sure we secure this hand over here. And now look how cute, he's already ready to go. Now, strings are never my friend. There we go. Just straighten that out. And he's already ready, his little hand looks so cute. So let's stuff something under there just to keep his hand in place. So we'll get another little bean and we'll just stick it under there to keep it supported. The more support, the more comfy, cozy baby is, the less you have to worry about any kind of wriggling. And we'll just let him wriggle a little bit, hands back on, and he's good to go. So now, all we need to do is stretch out our blanket a little bit to get rid of any wrinkles that we don't wanna have to take out later. I'm going to steal one of my clips from up here. And if you start to see that wriggle again, remember we're just going to put our hands on really lightly and just make them feel safe and comfy. Lay those down so they're not in his face. Now, in terms of angle of view, there's a couple different things you can do here. And this is another reason why I love having that backlight because sometimes I like to shoot that backlit shot um, with baby's face. So I'm gonna try to pull this up just a little so his skin's not exposed. There we go. He's super happy right now. And listen, it's a patient work, like babies have their own schedule and we're getting really lucky because we schedule our newborn sessions for about three hours, just so that we don't have to rush through. So as you're taking your hand off, another really great hint is to not just lift very quickly, just one finger at a time. Now, if this was in my, in my studio and I was taking this shot, I would do a safe shot just to make sure that I got it in case if, you know, he wakes up, which he's wriggling a little bit, but it's not anything crazy. We'll turn this back on. We'll let him turn his little head. So when you're trying to um, get the baby to turn their head a little bit more toward the light or whatever, it's good to take one of your smaller beans and just use it as a little kind of tool to push things over. So you go underneath again. I'm going to turn this a little bit. You'll go underneath again. I want his head to come this way so that when I turn, the light is going across him again. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to suggest to him with this bean and turn it just a little bit. There we go. That's perfect. Now he's all snuggled in there. And I don't have those unsightly. Now he's there. I've got my beautiful little butterfly under his nose. 
The last thing that we'll try to perfect, if it's possible, a lot of babies really like to have their hands and fists. He's straightened his hand for us to stretch. I'm gonna keep my thumb there and try to get him to keep his hand open for us for a few minutes. He's doing it up here too. So I'm just gonna scoop my thumb in and put that hand there against his head with the fingers open and see if he'll let us do it. Tracy, I do have a couple of questions for you while you're doing that. Yeah, go ahead. Excellent. Um, one is, did you brush the baby's hair before placing the hat? No, his hair is just perfect. Perfect. <laughs> you can if you like. Sometimes the parents like it a certain way too. Awesome. And then the last one is, um, you mentioned your typical session with babies is three hours, correct? Yes. And But don't they have to wake up and pee and be changed and repeat that process? And then if they do, how do you get them to sleep again? So that's a really great question. The reason the session is for three hours is not because I'm shooting for three hours. <laughs> it's because in three hours, a baby goes through a complete cycle. A complete cycle is eat, cry, poop, pee, sleep. And we never know what order they're going to come in, but we know they're all going to happen. And so we schedule three hours because we don't know if that deep, deep sleep like this is going to come at the beginning, the middle, or the end. And so we just keep ourselves open for that three hours so that no one feels rushed. So we've got a nice, calm baby now. Did that answer the question, Eric? I think so. Um, it, she says also, it sounds like most of that time is spent posing, right? Um, yeah, a lot of the time is spent posing. A lot of it is spent just settling. And I will, oh, he just smiled. Um, I will, <laughs> look at that smile. Um, I will tell you that if you have a baby that's really unsettled, that wrapping a baby is one of the best ways to get them to calm down. Um, and if I have time at the end, I'll show a comfort wrap. What time is it? Oh my gosh, it's 8.43. Eric, this need to be five hours long. Um, <laughs> or at least three hours. But anyways, <laughs> at least three hours. Yeah. Um, but if you have a baby that just is, is having a really difficult time settling, um, wrapping a baby is always a great option. And um, if you haven't seen what uh, what was commonly referred to as the comfort wrap, I strongly suggest looking it up if I don't have time to show you, because it really just does calm down just about any baby. So I've kind of showed you the back pose, guys. There's so many options with this. Um, when I shoot this way with that backlight there and allow my front light to come here across, I can get beautiful shots. Um, with that backlight kind of coming in as a kicker on the baby's cheek. And I love doing that. But another option is to shoot overhead. So if we turn him a little bit more, you could always shoot overhead and into the baby like this. Now, one thing is that I just want to say, never ever shoot overhead um, on a baby and, and don't use a camera strap. Okay, like the worst thing that could happen is that the camera slips out of your hand onto the baby. So never, ever, ever do that. Um, just always make sure you have the camera secured on your body if you're going to do that. Um, so I've showed you bum up and I've showed you the back pose. I would love to show you um, really quickly how to get the really cool shots of baby in parents' hands. Um, and then if I have, is Ron willing to like come in here and let me show something? <laughs> Let's ask Ron if this is daddy. We're going to see if daddy will come in and, and work with us just for a second so I can show you guys. Um, a lot of you have seen the the um, the poses with the baby on um, black where it looks like dad's just holding the baby up and there's nothing else there. And I just want to show you that that is not done um, in the air. So a lot of people think that the baby's being held up in the air. And I just want to show you how simple it is to get those shots so that you all can do that. And that's if Ryland's going to let us do that part. But I think he is because I think he just doesn't like being on his back. So again, I'm going to just very gently take things out one at a time. And then hopefully he's not going to scratch himself and get really mad because sometimes that happens too. 
Okay, so he really likes being on his belly, and I can tell. You'll probably be able to, you know, tell quickly as you're working with your babies. Over time, you'll be able to learn how baby laid inside of mom. So since we're going to have him go that way, I'm just going to sneak this out underneath and allow him to lay on his side because he really wants to. And that's how we're going to want him for these shots anyway. So we're just going to take him that way and allow him to lay on his side and we'll kind of hold him up. We're going to take this out. All these bean bags. Now, we'll get him nice and cozy on his side real quick. Now, I have a, I'm actually going to get him up to settle him real quick while I move this blanket. Another quick hint is that sometimes when you're working with a baby, if mom is in the room and she is nursing, they say that a baby can smell its mother's milk from a very, very, very far distance. It's almost as much as a polar bear can smell food underneath the ice. It's like literally that crazy. I keep looking at the computer because I want to see you guys, but Tony's over here. So, um, so if mom is in the room, and baby is unsettled, it is possible that the reason why baby is unsettled is because he or she smells mom's milk. And so just know that sometimes having mom just step away for a second can help bring baby back to a calm space. So we're just gonna get him in here and wrap him up really nice and tight, see if we can calm him down. Tracy, can you explain the um, the orange and white toy again next to him? Yes, this is called the baby shusher. And it's just creating a shushing sound. And if you don't have one and you're a newborn photographer, get one. Because it's so awesome. We're just going to let him get calm. Now, as soon as we start getting hands by mouth and baby starts trying to suck on hands, we might be out of luck. So let's see if we give a binky, if we could just sneak it out. And never force a binky into a baby's mouth. It's a very gentle mo motion. If you just touch the cheeks, baby will often open their mouth because that's how they start to nurse. And it's let them suck the binky in. You don't push it down their throats. It's a very gentle mo mo movement and you let them pick it. He may not want it and if he doesn't, that's okay. He's still being so gent so calm. Okay, let's just see if I can show you. Even if he does wriggle a bit, it'll still be okay. So I'm gonna help daddy, Ron, come sit right here. Let me just move that hat out of the way. Okay, dad's gonna sit right in this chair. Oh, but it's okay. I know what you want, but can you wait five minutes? Can we have a five minute plan? There we go. Yeah. He's smart. He's like, that's not what I want. <laughs> so we're just very gentle now. I'm going to let him kind of wriggle for a minute and we'll just kind of work through it and see what happens. We're going to let dad bring his hands up underneath baby. Yep. See how big dad's hands are. And we have to have dad bring his elbows completely together, right? Hands are laid flat out to the sides so that the head is still looking supported. Good. And then we'll try to get baby's legs to be as together as possible. Now, Tony, I don't know if you can kind of show this overhead view. When we're doing this shot, we're going to have dad just lay his head over to the side as much as he can and try to touch his wrists together. And then we will work hard to get baby into the spot there. 
and we'll try to turn baby just a little bit up. Now he's wriggling, but I just want to show you how this shot is never done in the air. Please never, ever, ever ask a parent to suspend a baby like this. It's very easy to do it on the beanbag on black. Thank you. <laughs> so, all right. I know you did so good. Let me see the time. Oh, we've got 10 minutes. Let's play a little more. Let me see if he's going to play with us. Just a little bit longer. What questions are coming in? Do you guys have any questions on any of that as we're trying to get Ryland calm just a little bit more? Nice. Thanks, Tracy. We do have a couple. Um, I kind of are... trapped Tony. Okay. <laughs> Are you willing to share your average price for these sessions? Yeah, absolutely. So almost no one books just a newborn session with us because we have a family package plan that is amazing and everyone loves it. Um, so what we do is we do um, maternity, newborn, um, and then we do what we call a sitter session when baby begins sitting up. Um, we do a pull-up session when baby begins pulling up on furnishings. And then we do a um, birthday session on the one-year birthday. So ours is a package that we put together. Now people, there are some people who book a newborn session with us, but for the most part, by and large, people are booking their sessions as a package because it makes the most sense um, for a family, just because then they can budget it over the year. Um, the way that we have it, we do it like almost like a subscription where people can make payments over the course of the year. Um, if, if you can kind of follow me on it, it makes total sense because it's monthly recurring revenue. So you're never, your business is never having a dead season. Like people talk about how, you know, January, February, March is so dead. I never have any business coming in during those months. But if you're doing a yearly plan, then your families are, um, are supporting your business year round. And it's a great way to like set your business up for success in a financial way so that you always have working capital. Um, the answer to your question though, for a newborn session alone, we charge $2,000. And so, um, and we get paid $2,000 consistently for our newborn sessions. So for those of you who think that you can't do it, I promise you it is totally possible. Tony just turned on the light and I got really bright, but it'll work itself out. So um, for those of you who think that you can't charge enough for your newborn sessions, let me tell you, people want the best. So give them the best. And instead of thinking about how much people are willing to pay, think about how much value you could offer to someone. How can you make their experience so amazing that the price is irrelevant. And another thing I like to say and the way I like to look at it is that, you know, we don't want to service everyone. We want to service the clients that are best for us, for our business, that aren't going to be a pain in my bum, that I can like call and say, I'm doing this class. Can I borrow your baby? And they're excited to do it. I want it people I'm going to have a relationship with. Um, so that's just the way I've set myself up in my business is as an authority. And let me tell you, um, I don't want to dote on too long about this because this isn't a business class, but I will tell you the number one way to charge more for your work is to stop giving people the price when they call you and say, how much do you charge? Stop it right now. Take your prices off of your website. And you may think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, stop it. People cannot quantify a value based on a number alone. They cannot. They need to understand the value of what you're doing and what you're offering to them. So please take your prices down off your website. Do a consultation. Show them that you know what you're talking about, that they know that they can trust you. Build rapport. It is the most important part of the sales process. For those of you who are not doing that, I, I promise you, you can double your prices tomorrow if you just start selling consultations instead of selling sessions. Stop selling sessions. Sell the consultation and then sell the session in the consultation. People need to, this is the most important thing in their lives. I am holding their future. I am holding their legacy. Like, come on, $500? Really? I don't think so. 
and they don't think so either. So just so you know, this is the most important thing in their lives. So that's my soapbox. I'm jumping off now. <laughs> that's amazing information, Tracy, and so invaluable. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I have uh, just yeah. a couple more here too. Are, are the sessions that you do typically in your studio or do you take gear to your client's home? This is an awesome question because I am not a lifestyle newborn photographer. Um, and there is a difference between a lifestyle newborn photographer and a studio newborn photographer. I am a definitely a studio photographer. Um, I, You guys, Tony, can you really quickly switch views? And I'm going to give you a tour of this room because we kind of did this before you all came on. This is my newborn room in our studio. We have other parts of our um, studio space, but I just want to show you our newborn room and what we use during our sessions so that you all can have a look at how much it takes to actually kind of pull it off, right? So go ahead, Tony, over there. And I don't know if you can see what you're seeing there. Okay, so these are headbands, um, hats, wraps, um, all on like a like a ladder system that we've created. Um, that's one part of it, right? So imagine me taking everything I think I might need to a session. Um, if it's a lifestyle session, it's totally different. So wraps, blankets, um, furs, you know, all the things, right? And then over here on this other wall that has kind of been maybe in some of the shots behind me is all more furs, more props, more things that we use in the studio to create our session experience. So it, it wouldn't make any sense for me to take this giant bean bag you guys are looking at and all of those props to someone's house to do a session. So if that answers the question, I definitely am not a um, in-home newborn photographer. And if people call me and ask me if I will do it, I refer them to someone else because I want them to find someone, but not me. Perfect. Thank you, what? Tracy. Um, it looks like we got yeah. about two more minutes, so maybe just a couple more questions here. Um, what is the sure. ideal age for the babies for this? Oh, great question. So we mentioned it a little earlier. Um, when we have a newborn, um, we try to get them as close to birthday as possible. I know that I said that, but when what we tell our clients is that we want to see you before 10 days old. Now, sometimes people can't because their baby's in NICU or, guys, see, I'm going to let Rylan go eat. You can see he's eating his hands. So I'm going to pass him to mom and let him eat. So you, thank you, Rylan. You were amazing. And um, let me answer that question then, Eric. Um, thank you, Bree. Um, so... Ideal age is anywhere um, close to birthday. I do, I like to say five days at least, but there are some times when people are in NICU or they don't get out of the hospital or they have a C-section and they and it's just, there are things that happen. I never turn anyone away of my clients just because they couldn't get here before that time. I just prepare them for the fact that like some of the poses that everyone loves, they're not gonna be able to get into like a froggy or taco pose because baby is not gonna be um, as, you know, womb-like as they are when they're closer to their birthday, if that makes sense. Awesome. Can and you I offer another got, session uh, showing more props in an older Thank you, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Eric, go ahead. No, that's okay. I was gonna read that one to you. Uh, and also, um, what is your yearly subscription price? Okay, so this is a good a good question. I want to. I'll do both. So, um, I, I. Do you mean when you say an older session? Just clarify it in chat. Do you mean like six months, or do you mean like ten days, or twelve days, or fourteen days? Like, what do you mean? And then in terms of the subscription price, like it totally depends on what people pick that they want in their package. But to give you an example, one of our subscription offerings is they pay a retainer. In Ohio, we have to say retainer, not deposit. I get, Tony yells at me about this all the time. I'm not allowed to call it a deposit, it's a retainer. But anyways, they pay a $650 retainer and they pay $300 a month for 16 months. And then they pay a final payment of 650. And so that gets them through their entire year of photography. So I hope that makes sense. We also offer an album and a few other products in that uh, plan. 
just to kind of let you guys know how that works. Um, oh, three to six months. So, um, so I don't do three month sessions. Um, I used to, but to be honest with you, there isn't a lot um, that I feel really great about in, in the three month sessions because it's mostly overhead shots. Baby has no neck control at that time. Um, and the real milestone here is when they are sitting up. So we've just taken it out because it just wasn't a high yield thing for us. People don't really care. And it felt really close because you do your maternity session, say at 32 weeks, and then the baby's back in when the baby's born. And then three months later, you're back. So it just kind of worked out for us that we decided that for our business, it just didn't fit. But the six month sessions are amazing because baby's sitting up now. So now we have the opportunity to work in so many different ways. And usually their little personalities are coming out and it's adorable. So for six months, um, I would love to do another class on any of that. So you guys just, you, you know, talk to them.